do. And so investment in the neighborhood, that was one of the things that, or you should, actually most of what the state of the city address was that the mayor gave and talking about um, making sure that those investment projects are coming in in different areas of the city. Well, he talked about tearing down the obstacles to opportunity and certainly one obstacle to opportunity is getting people to training programs. And right. if you have a training program and it's downtown or it's out, out somewhere people can't get to because there's transportation issues in the city. This brings a training center right into a neighborhood where people, if they had to, can walk to it. And I, you know, I think this is a, a major commitment and a really good progress in trying to figure out, okay, we got all these programs, why aren't people participating and breaking down the obstacles to participation? Yeah. We've, we've already started to think about a lot of that at the Tuxedo Project, and one of the real barriers is, so in order to go to this training program, you have to have a high school diploma or a GED. Well, mm -hmm. for a lot of our neighbors, that never, that never happened in their lives. They're not gonna be ready uh, unless they do that. The other thing is that they have curriculums uh, in some of the VOCTAC schools to, to prepare people for the specific work at these carpenter facilities. Uh, they like people to have some of that as well. And so we're trying to figure out, you know, how do you fill that gap? Not just in our neighborhood, but in every neighborhood like that around the city. There's, there are all kinds of people who just aren't prepared for this kind of opportunity and there needs to be a citywide effort to figure out how we do that and how we do it in people's neighborhoods. Because as Nolan said, mm -hmm. our neighbors can't get across the city to go do that kind of thing. They have to do it where they are. And we yeah. focus a lot on the high paycheck jobs, the high tech jobs and bringing in you know these big companies and exciting new companies. We need a lot of entry-level jobs mm -hmm. in the city to help people who haven't worked before uh, get those skills they need to start moving up the economic ladder. And we yeah. talked about the earned income tr uh, <clears throat> tax credit mm -hmm. that the governor proposed. I'm big on those because they actually encourage people to seek training and to, to, to yeah. better their education. They provide incentives for that. One aspect of the two is that they talked a lot about is returning citizens, and yeah. we concentrated mm -hmm. that on yep. as well, and the opportunity for the number of people who have come out of prison and say, what can I do next? Right. And, and what are the things that I can do and that I'm prepared to be able to do and have access to be able to do That's as right. well? That's right, that's uh, right. And again, that gap, how many people leave prison or jail, which is another place that people stay for a long time here uh, unnecessarily, mm -hmm. uh, and don't have a GED and don't have a high school diploma, that's, right? That's a crime uh, that the state commits. Uh, right. If you have a prisoner walk, locked up for three, four, or five Why years, can't you get them and a during diploma? that time, that prisoner doesn't earn a GED or some skill. Yeah. I mean, the recidivism rate for, for prisoners who leave the prison system with skills. And there are some programs, yeah, right. a growing number of programs. Um, Heidi Washington has put in a good number of training programs. Those who go through the programs and leave with skills, far less likely yeah, to go back they to don't, prison. They don't always go back. And yeah. you know, you talk about entry level jobs. This is a four year program. You get paid while you're doing it. You get health insurance while you're doing mm -hmm. it. And when you come out, the average carpenter is making $55 an hour. That's way more than entry level, I think. And then uh, the challenge is keeping them in the neighborhoods. Yeah, and, right? May, and yeah. Don't leave. You know, I talked to a minister the other day who was doing job training and redevelopment. Mm -hmm. He says, we've got to get a commitment from the people we train to stay here yeah. after they've hit That's you know, right. after they've, in the neighborhood. After they've hit it, it big. And then you've got opportunity, job opportunity, even even building this, for this facility. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, building which the facility, is going to be knocking huge. down the homes. There's all kinds of stuff that's going to really lift the fortunes of uh, the people who live yeah, there. Yeah, and I, and I think as we kind of go forward and, and follow mm -hmm. some of the progress that you're doing in the neighborhood, I want to talk about blight, I think, more specifically. Yeah, that's and, the place and to do it. <laughs> the, the tough road it is to make sure you can knock down the houses that are, um, that are, that are in the place yeah. that are not occupied right now.